I gotta say, it's been an adjustment watching the Bills go from a team that plays 15 or more, or all, of their games on Sundays at 1 o'clock to a team that plays maybe half of their games on Sundays at 1 o'clock, 8 or 9 of them maybe. I mean, the Bills had three games on Thursday nights this year. Two on Monday night, one on Sunday night, one on Saturday night, upcoming next week against Miami. They had a late start, a 4 p.m. start in Kansas City because the league views them as a prime matchup now and wants them in front of more national audiences. We're even getting commentator respect. We're getting Jim Nance and Tony Romo for our matchup with the Jets. Like, imagine thinking about that five or ten years ago, or at least before McDermott and Josh Allen showed up. We didn't get Al Michaels. We just had Al Michaels last week on Thursdays. He used to be on Sundays. But, like, we didn't get Al Michaels. We didn't get Nance and Phil Sims. It used to be. Now it's Nance and Romo. But, again, we are now a prime matchup for the league. We are good television. That's exciting. That's awesome. I mean, the... Primetime games for the Bills, those used to be something you would like plan your year around almost, or the whole season. Like, because the schedule would come out in April or May, and you know, you'd be like, let's see what we got. Did we get any primetime games? Now it's a foregone conclusion. Of course we're gonna get some. Maybe four or five. It's gonna happen every three weeks or so. But back then, it was like, oh, we're maybe gonna get one. We're gonna get one Thursday and maybe one Monday night, or probably on the road, because the league doesn't wanna, you know, focus on Buffalo. Like that 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 whole thing is gone. Burn it all! As they like to say, burn it all. But it's been an adjustment. I love Football Sunday. I presume that most of you do as well. Or you wouldn't be watching this right now. And waking up on Football Sunday, knowing the Bills are going to be on at 1 o'clock. Literal clockwork. It is literally clockwork. That the Bills are going to be on at 1, there's going to be a game at 4, a game at 8. Like that's, I'm just used to that being my day. Or, over the years, I had just grown accustomed to that being my day. Now, it's all jumbled up. And I love it. Don't get me wrong. I would much rather be good than go back to whatever that was. It's just an adjustment because... I don't know. Football Sundays are just different without them. Right? I mean, the, this past Sunday, let's take this for example. I... Wake up. The Bills have already taken care of business. Great. They approved the 9-3 and against New England. I'm going to talk about that in a little bit. And then I can focus my attention solely on the Bengals and the Bengals and Chiefs and the Niners and Dolphins at 4 o'clock. And I have NFL Red Zone, so I'm not even going to sniff a commercial from 1 o'clock till 7.30 at night or so. And that's awesome. But it's just like the day moves slower or something. I don't even really know how to describe it. I don't even really know what I'm getting at with this. It's just an adjustment, I guess. I don't know. Are you guys? Do you guys go through the same thing? Like, oh, it's Sunday the Bills aren't on. It's weird. Even though they're good, they've this has been you know trending this way for the last couple of years now. It's just, it's just different. It's just different. But don't get me wrong. I was super excited about you know beating New England, obviously. Like I said, focusing my attention on, you know, the Bengals and, and the Niners playing two teams that the Bills needed to lose. Um, or you know, not necessarily needed to lose, but would love to see to lose. And they both take care of business. That was, it was the best day ever. That's a SpongeBob reference. It was the best day ever. Okay? Wasn't always looking that way. The Dolphins scored on their first possession of the game. The first play of the game, right? To Trent Sherfield, not to Jalen Waddle, not to Tyree Kill, to Trent Sherfield, and it's seven nothing. Jimmy Garoppolo gets hurt on like the ensuing possession, breaks his foot, so it's like okay, here comes Brock Purdy. Like you, you think that's you're like well, well, we'll get our shot at Miami next week. We'll take care of that then, or in two weeks. Let's focus back on the Bengals. They're in like they actually went up pretty early. I think did they go up like fourteen three on the Chiefs. Then it was like fourteen ten. And then, right before half, they have, a, like, a third and one at, like, the three-yard line or something. And the sneak doesn't work. And then they try this stupid reverse play. And it goes for negative three yards. And, and right then and there, you think, oh, Cincinnati might as well walk off the field right now. Like, yeah, oh, this is cool. We tried. This game is over. I, I mean, I thought that. Patrick Mahomes was, like, 26-0 and 0 in November and December. And even when they come out in the second half, they score a touchdown right away. 
The Bengals answer with a field goal. The Chiefs answer with a touchdown. The Bengals answer with a field goal. You're like, yep, the Bengals are kicking field goals. The Chiefs are scoring touchdowns. It's 24-20. Guess we're going to have to try again on home field advantage on the number one seed. But Bengals, much to their credit, they got a fumble. They answer it with a touchdown. They got a missed field goal. These are, you know, fortunate things. Fumbles aren't. The, the fumble, I think, was a little bit lucky. Looks like Kelsey's forward progress might have been stopped there. But he fumbles. The Bengals recover, they make points out of it, and a missed field goal you really have no control over, but you forced it, he missed it, you run the clock out. Super impressive job by the Bengals. They were not afraid of Kansas City. Um, they, they threw late on those possessions to try to get the first downs. They got them, they ran the clock out. Awesome. So really just the best weekend the Bills could have possibly hoped for because the Niners put the clamps down on, on Tua and the Dolphins after that, you know, the first quarter was really questionable and, and it didn't look, it looked kind of murky at best then, but they took care of business. The Bills back on top in the AFC East, back on top in the AFC overall, which is just awesome. Back in the driver's seat for home field advantage because one thing we were worrying about earlier this year was the loss of the Jets and the loss of the Vikings in back to back weeks, just the Bills screwing around. And, and blowing home field advantage for themselves. And now they're back in the driver's seat with it. They have a couple tough matchups, certainly. Like, not pushover matchups. I've said this about the Jets for the last month and a half. They're not pushovers anymore. Now that they've, especially now that they've gone to Mike White and they can actually throw the ball, they actually have a passing game. So the Jets are not a pushover matchup. The Dolphins, that's going to be one of the biggest matchups of the year. Um, they have a game at Cincinnati who looks... Super tough again. That's coming up in about four weeks. You know, not, not that not that the Bills necessarily look ahead, but it's obviously okay and fair for fans to look ahead because it's only natural. Um, but we'll take it one week at a time. We'll hit the that that buzz phrase that one week at a time, guys. So let's talk about um, the New England game really quick. We're gonna, obviously going to talk about the news that we got, the injury news that we got this week as well regarding Von Miller which is super unfortunate, of course. But to touch back on New England, the Bills smothered them. I, I don't care that Marcus Jones caught a 48-yard touchdown. I mean, it was, like, annoying at the time. It's like, oh, my God, we're down 7-3 right now. It's just like, what's happening here? But the Bills scored 17 points in their first three possessions and, for the most part, smothered New England. I mean, they were pretty helpless on offense. You know, there's that video of... Mac Jones throwing expletives at the air, maybe at himself, maybe at the coaching staff. We don't really know what exactly, but they, they had nothing going. They had nothing going all night. They they punted, what did they punt, six times. They missed a field goal, um, a, a sh not a short field goal, but like they missed a field goal that most kickers make, and it was short because they hit the crossbar. And they, it's, there was nothing. Like, the Bills were never really in danger. Like I said, they scored 17 points pretty quick. It's unfortunate that they ended up having to punt against New England for the first time in three games. Uh, they maybe lost some points before the half with a, with a fumble. You know, I can be critical of these things, but really the Bills, they felt pretty made pretty early because, the, the, I mean, just super non-threatening Patriots team. They're, like, even though that Questenberry was playing injured at left tackle, and he had some really rough goes at it, really rough reps, I guess, some really rough plays, however you want to phrase it. Um, I'm proud of him for, for gutting it out. Um, I was wondering early on if it was going to be a problem because it looked like he was just getting um, you know, beat like he stole something, really. But he bounced back. He, or they, I don't know if they shifted protection or they just ran away from him. I, I like Josh to just... like. I, I know that there's a weakness here, that you're playing hurt, and they have a really good pass rusher with Judon, and even Uche was pretty good. He forced a fumble, I believe. Let me handle that. I'll run away from these guys. Like, you can you can be critical of this if you want, I mean, of the backup left tackle, but I'm just not going to waste that much time on it. What like In the Bills, in the second half, they, they come out, they, there's a there's a digs drop, which was unfortunate, of course, on like third and 11, that... You know, took them out of field goal range or a chance to be in field goal range. But they answer back with a 15-play, 94-yard drive. 
takes up nine minutes. I mean, it's 24-7 at that point going into the fourth quarter. And, I mean, the game is, for all intents and purposes, it is over. Um, the Bills have kind of transitioned to, to owning the Patriots as, as presently constructed. Like I said last week, the only reason people even think about losing to them is because we did so much losing to them for two decades. Because that, that ghost of Bill Belichick, that, I mean, they're just not the same team. They're good on defense. They're really good against the Jets. Sure, fine, whatever. I, I, they're, they're a non-threat to me. You know, I, I, I don't even really worry about them. I, I, just, I just anticipate beating them. How, do I, how else do I say that? I just I go in thinking that they're going to win. I know that that, you know, I, I, I brought this up already. They lost, sure. They allowed a 48-yard touchdown to a corner. Whatever. I mean, these weird things happen. The, the weird angle by the, the corner and the safety there, and he gets outside and he scores. Like, the Bills just don't usually make mistakes like that on defense, and I know that's going to happen once in a while. It happened, like, Juju Smith-Schuster, it happened, you know, happened uh, against Jalen Waddle on 3rd and 22. Like, these, it's just going to happen occasionally, and it's going to suck occasionally. But the Bills were too good for the, for the Patriots. Bar none. End of story. Patriots are back in the rear view, totally out of contention, I think, for, for the a not necessarily the playoffs, but definitely for the AFC East, Miami, and... Um, and the Bills are just noticeably, noticeably ahead of them. So that brings up the Jets this week. Um, well, actually, let's go back to the, the Von Miller thing, I guess, before we talk about the Jets. That sucks. Okay, obviously, Von Miller went in for surgery and came out with a repaired ACL, and that's unfortunate because we thought that maybe he was going to try to get back this week against the Jets with some rest and rehab. And I was certainly hoping for Miami at the latest, but now we're hoping for training camp at the earliest. Um, it, it, as unfortunate as it is, because they've they've paid him the six-year deal and he's going to take up a roster spot, take up cap space, despite the fact that he's not going to play, it doesn't really change, didn't change the Super Bowl odds, didn't change their odds of winning the AFC East. Everyone likes to think, not everyone, but like media and people like, you know, media, I guess, some fans, just shallow-mindedly think that defensive ends just make this massive difference. And they can, in throughout the course of a game. Like T.J. Watt, I think, makes a massive difference for the Steelers. They can. They certainly can make a difference. But when your quarterback is Josh Allen, that's what makes a difference. If, if Diggs got hurt as well, I think it might impact their, their Super Bowl odds, their AFC East odds maybe. But if Allen got hurt, I mean, good night. Good night season. Like, a defensive end just doesn't do a ton for you in terms of, like, expected wins, to use, like, an analytical phrase that a lot of people love to just rag on. Um, and if you do, you do, fine, whatever. I think they're worth paying attention to, even if you don't, you know, necessarily follow them religiously. A defensive end just doesn't make that much of a difference. He can throughout the course of a game, but over the course of a season, it's not necessarily... A huge loss, but I would rather have him. Don't get me wrong. Like, if I were the Bills, I, I might consider using him sparingly in the future. Like, you got him for those plays he made against Kansas City, where he showed up in the biggest drive of the game and sacked Patrick Mahomes, or tripped up Patrick Mahomes to drive before that. Like, that's why you got him, not to defend the Lions on Thanksgiving. You know, I, I know that that's a weird way to approach football, but it is true, right? I mean, it's true. So it's unfortunate that he's gone. Huge opportunity for Rousseau and Epinesa, even Boogie Basham, who will certainly play more Shaq Lawson as well. So, you know, I'm not writing off the Bills' Super Bowl chances by any means. They were 13 seconds away from the AFC Championship without Von Miller last year. You know, they still would have had to win two more games to win the Super Bowl. That, you know, so take some solace in that. When you think about 13 seconds again, think about how the Bills would have, they would have had to win two more games to win the Super Bowl. I think going to the Super Bowl is exciting. Going to the AFC Championship is exciting. Especially, if, you know, considering it would have been a home game against the Bengals. But, hey, let's not go down this road. Jets, Jets, we're going to throw that in the back. Von Miller's injured. It's unfortunate. Let's talk about the Jets. The Jets made the quarterback change, of course. They're 1-1 one one since doing so. Um, Zach Wilson, probably never going to play for the Jets ever again. 
right? I mean, how can they? How can the the plan be to go back to him? That that just can't be the plan. The the locker room loves Mike White. He's thrown for over 300 yards in both of his starts. Uh, they have a, a young rookie receiver in Garrett Wilson who has like 13 for 257 since. Mike White took over. They throttled the Bears. They had a really good chance at beating the Vikings. Barrios dropped a pass in the end zone. They were knocking on the door. Um, you know, they had a, that. I believe Barrios' play was on the same drive. Um, you know, they were driving to take the lead. Of course, they would have still had to stop Minnesota after that. Um, but you know, time was running out. Like, I mean, it, whatever. The, the point stands. They had a really good look at beating the Vikings, which the Bills didn't do. The Jets are really the only team, I think, that, like, straight up, I don't have too many excuses, I guess, for them losing. You know, the Miami game, a lot of fans want to point to the weather and the 100 injuries, and there were some injuries against the Jets as well. Milano didn't play, Trey White didn't play, Jordan Poyer didn't play, Spencer Brown didn't play. Um, so there were some injuries against the Jets as well. And the Vikings game for the Bills... I mean, they won it three times and just continued puking it back to the Vikings. So, yeah, but the, the Jets, the Jets beat the Bills straight up. You know, no matter how, which way you want to slice or cut it, with Zach Wilson at quarterback, they ran the ball when it mattered. They made a few throws here and there. They didn't make a mistake, I guess. They ran the ball well when it mattered and didn't make a mistake. The Bills made a couple mistakes. They, in the first half, missed a field goal. Like, like the, the Vikings, this is almost exactly the same, sort of. Um, the Vikings had 20 points at halftime against the Jets last week. 20. It was like 20 to 3. You're thinking they're walking away with it. Ah, Mike White, fun story, haha. The Jets came on and, and kicked five field goals in the game, scored a touchdown late, and, you know, they ended up almost winning the game. The Bills are up 14-3 against the Jets in the first half. They could have had more. Allen threw the interception on the first drive, the terrible interception that takes three, if not seven, off the board. So that's 17 at a minimum, maybe 21. And then they missed a field goal as well right before half. So that's, you know, 20 or 24 points that they could have had at halftime. But they did next to nothing in the second half. They kicked a single field goal, and the Vikings themselves against the Jets went to sleep as well. Um, looking at their drive chart as well. Stand by. Have it up. Vikings drive chart in the second half. Punt, 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 touchdown, punt, punt. Like, not great. Not great. The uh, Jets was field goal, field goal, field goal, touchdown, turnover on downs, interception. So, yeah, I mean, and they were at the, they were at the end zone both times. Or near the end zone, driving towards the end zone both times. So, I mean, I, I've, I've brought this point up a hundred times. I mean, it feels like a hundred times. The Jets just aren't pushovers. They're super talented on defense. Um... Love Quinn and Williams, love C.J. Mosley, love Sauce Gardner. They have playmakers at, at each level, just like the Bills do. You know, love Ed Oliver, love Tremaine Edmonds, Matt Milano, love Trey White, love Jordan Poyer. I think that in the first matchup, the Jets took advantage of Terrell Bernard playing a lot of the snaps. Matt Milano, still injured, concerning. Don't know when that could happen. He played the whole Patriot game, and now he comes up with an injury and isn't practicing early in the week, and it's starting to look questionable at best. So, I don't think Terrell Bernard will play. I think AJ, those snaps will go to A.J. Klein, who they, they recently acquired. Um, so that might be a bit of a difference. But Jordan Poyer in for Jaquan Johnson. Jaquan had a tough game the first go-around against the Jets, so much so that the Bills really haven't played him on defense since. So that's, like, they, they went the next week, they played Cam Lewis at safety because they couldn't trust Jaquan Johnson. So, you know, putting Poyer back in the lineup, that makes a big difference for sure. And putting um, Trey White in the lineup, Obviously a big difference. Dane Jackson's snaps went down a lot against New England as well. So with, with Xavier Rhodes coming back into play, hopefully Kyrie Elam gets back in the lineup. I thought that was kind of weird. Um, a weird benching, weird healthy scratch because he had practiced most of the week. So, you know, hopefully the, the three corners rotation now is, well, four with Taron Johnson is, is Elam, White, and Rhodes. Uh, I think they're all ready to go. But, I, I mean, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pick the Bills to win. Um, I think that the protection didn't hold up last time. Josh got sacked five times. Um, again, Spencer Brown was out of the game. Um, I don't know how much of a difference that necessarily makes. I do expect Deion Dawkins to be back from his ankle injury this week. So that's encouraging. 
Um, I like what the Bills have done with James Cook the past couple of weeks. Um, they've increased his workload. He had over 100 total yards against against the Patriots. Diggs is still Diggs. John Brown getting his feet wet, played 12 snaps. You know, that was nice. I, I still can't figure out what the, the deal is with Dawson Knox. Zero for zero on one target last week. Not that it mattered. Like, it just was, but the fact that he's been a total non-factor at times, I expected the touchdown regression because that was a lot last year, and I expected him to come back down to earth on that, but there are games where they, I mean, they just don't even look his way, but, you know, I, I don't necessarily know that that'll change over this week, the next couple of weeks even, who knows. I guess he's a nice weapon to have, but at the same time, they're getting by without him, so... Even if the Bills were to go on to like the Super Bowl, I think there's a future conversation about that contract, probably. Anyway, I didn't mean to detract from the Jets. I'm going to pick the Bills to beat the Jets, though. Bills over Jets, 27-17. Bills over Jets. Guys, thanks for coming this far in the video. Hit me up on Twitter. My Twitter handle and YouTube username are the same. Enjoy your weekend. See you at the game. As always, above all else, go Bills.